Uh, so I've planed the wood for the doors here. Just stacked it all close together. Hopefully it'll behave itself. And the wood for the shelves is going to have to have to wait just for now. I skip filming planing and all this because you've seen me do it before. But I just need to get these cut. Get some dominoes in the corners. Get these frames made. Then I can make the doors. Uh, I'm just cutting all these up. I put a stop on for these, for the legs, for these pieces going down the side because they're all the same. These top rail, bottom rail, different for different L curves. What I'm going to do is cut the two together, squared up one end, and put it like that, chop through them together. Then I know they're exactly the same size. I could set up a stop, but if I weren't filming, I'd have done this by now. So that's going to go together like that. Let's get some dominoes in here. Two or three. I think it'll be just end up being two. We'll see. Just one in the top here. So that marks my face and into the inside edge. Like I was saying before, don't just put a pencil mark. Put a little squiggle because you can easily get pencil marks like that or from when I'm planing the edges sometimes there might be a pencil mark left on somewhere right 10mm cutter I'm going this timber is about 27mm so I've set the depth at about 13 which is roughly middle and I'm working off the second stop because they're 10 mil cutter behind there I'm just going off the second stop here. For the top then, that'll bring it down like that. And there's always a batten going around the top to fix the fix the top down. So that'll bridge that a little bit. That'll be okay. And this one for the bottom rail. Be that way up. That should be okay. Could put three in, but two will be enough. I'm just going to use regular wood glue, PVA wood glue. The only PU glue I've got is that five minute stuff. It would go off way too fast in it. It's toasty warm. I've checked it for square, put that to one side now, do the other one, right there done, 
you know, it's remembered to make the one that goes against the wall a little bit wider, so I've got room to scribe it. I'll leave them overnight and let them dry properly. And it's not so important, but I'll just check that they're in twist, which they're not. Ah, that's better. So those, the front and the back edge are parallel. Just have to put a pencil under this edge, just to lift that corner. So those are my two frames. Just sanded the faces off. Now these are the same size. So I'm going to cut eight styles. So I'm cutting these. This is the end that I cut out of a board. But this is the, the loose end. There's a bit of chalk on it to remind me about this. You see the split. Well, that's eight styles cut. What I'll do is measure between here, take off two, four, six millimeters, and whatever the remainder is, I'll divide that in half, and that'll give me my door width. I'll push two of those together, and then whatever that size is, I'll measure off like that. Right, so that distance is 800 mil. Take off six gives me seven ninety four. Half of seven ninety four is three ninety seven. So three ninety seven is about there. So I'll cut the styles to so I'll cut the rails to two thirty six or whatever it is. I'll do it properly with two hands. Uh, that distance is two thirty eight. So what I'm going to do is cut a head and a bottom, a bottom and a head, head and a bottom, just one of each, see how that fits, and I'll put one in there, one in there, and see what the distance is like. Alright, just to begin with, cut two, I know this is a head above there, but I'm just using it to check the distances, these are about 2 mil packers, so that's fine, I'm happy with that. There. and I'll cut while the stop's made, I'll cut the other one, seeing as I'm happy that that distance is right. So, something like that, I'll do it the same to this one. I've just measured that one, and you see these measurements, 397, that's the distance of these. When I cut my wood on here, or when I mark it, when I put a pencil line on, I'm either cutting with the saw blade, imagine the curve for the blade being that sort of width. I'm either cutting right on the line or I'm cutting to one side of the line. But that's the bit that gets cut out. You see I've got 397 there. These doors, half of that is going to be 420. So 397 and 420. And on my drawing, which is accurate, it's 397. And that's 3195 so I'm half a millimetre out on my measurements there but if I measure this I've written it as 846 and actually it's more like 845 and a half same up there so really that would be Something more like 419.5, like it's on there. Well, like I say, it's cut and measure accurately.
Right, so that's what we've got so far. There's a two mil gap between them all. These legs, well, all these pieces are filled with doors. I planed on Monday, it's Wednesday now. So they've had a chance a little bit maybe to move. I did leave them over a weekend before I planed them, of course, to, to move, but they might have moved again since then. And planing them absolutely straight. It's never that easy. There's, there's I don't know, half a millimetre bending that. But as I normally do, I'll balance them. Right, so what I've got there is all the styles balanced on this piece. And from that, you see that one's fraction high. There's a little fraction high there. Same again there, look, fraction high. So what I'll do is flip these until all those are pretty much flat, or at least in pairs, so one, two, three, four pairs. You see them so two are pretty good. So what I'll do is number those, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And I can sit them in here, then one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mark the faces. And when it all comes together, they might be a fraction bent that way, you know, that half millimetre. But if one's bent that way and the other one's bent that way, it just it becomes a bit of a mess. So, those two are good. Actually, those two aren't bad, but I'll turn it over and see what it's like. Not bad, I don't think it's balancing quite right, but if I hold that up there, that ends flush. And you see that's a lot better. There's a little bit of crud under there. You only need like eighth of a millimetre or something there. And it... Right, that'll do. Number them, get back in. So I've got them back in, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. All these timbers are pretty clean, so inside edge, inside edge, inside edge. And I'll mark them all, take it to bits, put them to one side and cut the dominoes. So this is an off cut off my bottom rail. That'll be like that. This is the top rail. I'm just working off just working off the first stop. Hook doing one and hooking that stop in there, doing the other one, hooking the stop in there, doing this one. And I'll do them all with the no adjustment. And then I can comfortably get a groove in there. That one's a little tight but it's okay. And I've just laid my boards out here. I've got numbers on top which represents the top because that's just going to have, have the two in it. But the bottom needs to be three. So just so that I don't get them mixed up. I've written bottom on as well. Right, so I've got one more to cut. This is my opportunity just to check that I've done everything right. 
Got my face marks there. So that's a pair, that's a pair, that's a pair. Holes are in the right end. If I'd cocked up, then I could maybe spin one round or something and make this one match. But everything's going okay, so just don't cock this one up. Right, so they're done. They're done. What I'll do is cut the panels. I've got grooves to cut in here, but I'll cut the panels. I'll put a couple of these together just loosely so that I can measure them. But I'll cut the panels, then that'll give me an off cut to set up the machine, get the grooves cut. So it's two together with temporary dominoes. What I'll do is add 20 mil to that. When I cut my grooves, I'll cut them about about 12 mil, 11, 12 mil. So I should have a little bit of play. Right, so that's two of them, two of them. I always give my customers the option of MDF or ply. Ply, you might see the grain coming through, but it'll probably last a lot longer. MDF might sag or bow a little bit. MDF gives you a nice flat finish, but like I say, ply is a slightly better option, but you might see the grain. It's gonna be grain of this showing through, so that's what we went for. I've got some off cuts now, so I can set up machine, cut some grooves in these. So I've got one of the test pieces here, one of the, one of the off cuts from the panels. And this is the beading that's going to be going on and I want this to finish almost flush with the face. So I'm going to work backwards. So if I put a pencil mark there. Just return that a little bit.
Right, so that's a little loose. I set this up for 9mm MDF. But I don't think I mind because, like I say, this beading's going on there like that. So I think I'm going to leave that as it is. Just need to set me depth now. So I've just temporarily put two together. They seem right. I haven't put any dominoes in yet. Didn't bother. But they seem right. And I made the panels in pairs, everything else is in pairs, so it should work out. And that'll go in there like that. I'll get them glued up now. I'm gonna use PVA again. So I've just had to offset that just a little bit again, just to pull it in. It was only a millimetre, but it's square now. Uh, so they're all glued together. Because I couldn't be asked changing the cutter. I could take washers out of the cutter, make it thicker and thinner. I had to put some wedges in, just to pull it down. But that moulding will cover that gap. 